Good evening and thanks for joining us on News 360 on TV3. The bulletin is live from the News Hub at digital address GA006-6714 at the Sanway Kandakura. I am Isa Moni. And I am Portia Gabo. Coming up the headlines. Tonight, about 1 billion CDs spent on road accident recovery and recuperation annually in Ghana. Also, project to complement government's efforts in recovery of environment and livelihoods of smallholder farmers affected by illegal mining launched. And also tonight, we take you to Girondogo in the Mandai district where students of the Presbyterian High School trek 6 kilometers to attend classes. And in mission, we visit Abanse in the eastern region where 19 year, 19 year of twins suffering mental illness are changed. Coming up in international news, U.S. Secretary of State says Washington is prepared to engage Iran without preconditions, but it must behave like a normal nation. And poet Naki wins TV3 Talented Kids Season 10. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And in our very first story, the Food and Agriculture Organization with funding from Japan has launched a project to complement government efforts in the recovery of environmental and livelihoods of smaller holder farmers affected by illegal mining. The project is to help in forest and biodiversity protection, promotion of cocoa-based agroforestry for buffering the climate change resilience. Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire together produce about 70% of the world's cocoa. As the second largest cocoa producer and exporter, the cocoa industry in Ghana employs about 800,000 farm families. Majority of these farmers hold less than two hectares of cocoa monocrop plantation with few or no shade trees. Cocoa contributes to more than half of the income of these farmers and therefore crucial for food security and nutrition. Cocoa generates about $2 billion in foreign exchange annually and a major contributor to government revenue and gross domestic products in Ghana. Japan and other developed countries are highly dependent on Ghana for the imports of cocoa beans, sourcing more than 70% from the country. However, illegal small-scale mining referred to as Galamse in Ghana is eroding gains as cocoa farmers lose their farmlands to degradation and environmental pollution. Unregulated illegal small-scale mining activities in Ghana have destroyed a great number of cocoa trees and farms, polluted and contaminated the soil and water bodies. Even years after Galamse activities are over, farmers are unable to cultivate their lands. This prompted the formation of interministerial task force to sustain the campaign against Galamsey to deal with the menace and to reclaim degraded lands. I think this is important to mention is that this is well designed so that when people need to wait for three or five years until uh, cocoa beans are ready, they from the first year uh, people can benefit from uh, fruits. A project to recovery of environmental and livelihoods of small smallholder farmers affected by illegal mining is being spearheaded by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, with funding from Japan. The preliminary results from both experimental farms have proven that SAFTA has the potential of increasing productivity of cocoa farms, increasing the forest cover and biodiversity conservation in Ghana. Vice-Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Beniza Odru Owusu, chaired the management board. The seemingly lack of interest in cocoa research is one serious factor. The environment under which we can maximize our cocoa production all come from research, but we don't seem to have interest in this. But most critically, the loss of arable land, lands for cocoa production to those who are mining our gold and our diamond and our bauxites. The project will help in forest and biodiversity protection as well as promote cocoa-based agroforestry. And Baku Central Member of Parliament, Mama Yarga in a letter has stated he is unable to honor the invitation of the special prosecutor to appear in court on June 4 because Parliament would be in session on the day of the invitation.
In a letter addressed to Martin Amidu, Mahama Yarga stated he could appear in court any other day when parliament is not sitting. The Boku Central Member of Parliament added the constitutional right of a member of parliament to represent his or her constituency in parliament and to participate in proceedings and a vote will be abridged if efforts is made to compel that person to respond to an invitation that will take the person out of parliament at a period when the house is sitting. The letter stated he is not enthused about abandoning his parliamentary duties in response to what he described as inappropriate timed invitation. Mama Yarga stressed any conduct on the part of Martin Amido to impede or obstruct his right to be in parliament on June 4 and represent his people will amount to contempt of parliament. In other news, former President John Mahama has called on the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, to ensure relief items reach flood-hit areas as early as possible, touring flood areas in some parts of Accra on Sunday, June 2. He said the little assistance the Disaster Management Agency provides to flood victims will give them some respite. The 2020 flag bearer of the main opposition National Democratic Congress visited some victims of last week's flood around Sahara Ghetto near Odona in Accra. The former president offered his condolences to those who suffered as a result of last week's heavy rains that left many parts of Accra flooded. He added efforts at dredging and expanding drainage system should be fast-tracked since it has been predicted by the meteorological agency there will be more rains. The premonition about what will happen is there because the last rain that fell was just about 40 minutes. And after 40 minutes, if you look at the level to which the water rose, then it means that knowing a crest rainy season, is the first half of June, where it rains from morning till evening, then it means that we're looking at a very um, serious situation. And if we don't speed up the efforts to clear the drains before the main rains come. John Mahama encouraged Ghanaians to maintain a clean environment to avoid any cholera outbreak. One of the major after effects of flooding is the possibility of the outbreak of cholera. And we don't have, want to see an outbreak of cholera in this place. I'm told that the day it rained and the flood had come, uh, the Nambung officials were here to look at what had happened. But since then, they haven't come with any relief for the people. You can see some of them. There's an old lady who told me, you know, her bag of beans and gari, you know, got wet. So she has no food to eat. We also saw the bakery. Um, he lost about 70 bags of flour and others. The little that Madmo can do to assist them will go a long way to make things easier for them. He was accompanied by a member of parliament for Clote Kole, Zenato Ajiman Rawlings. After 55 minutes of rainfall on Wednesday, May 29, most parts of Ghana got flooded, including areas which had never been affected by floods. This has raised concerns as to what will happen if it rains for more than two hours, a similar situation that took the lives of 150 Ghanaians on June 3, 2015. About 1 billion cities is spent on road accident recovery and recuperation annually in Ghana. Speaking at a national dialogue on the menace of the road traffic accident in Ghana, Executive Director of the National Road Safety Commission, Mayo Briabwa, said the money could be used on developmental projects if Ghanaians observe road traffic regulations. The number of road users killed in the first quarter of 2019 has seen a 17.6% increase over figures for the first quarter of 2018. Commuters and pedestrians killed increased from 592 in the first quarter of 2018 to 696 in the same period of 2019. Data from the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service show that a number of pedestrians killed rose from 198 in the first quarter of last year to 207 during the same period of this year. 
fatigue, overspeeding and driving under the influence of alcohol have been identified as major causes of road accidents. The National Road Safety Commission says there's a need for motorists to obey road traffic regulations. The law says that four hours after driving, every driver is supposed to stop and rest. We do not have rest stops on, mo on most of our major highways. That's one of the recommendations that rest stops should be on highways so that the drivers can stop and rest from their hard day's work. The Chief Executive Officer of the National Road Safety Commission, Engineer May Obri Yabwa, also called for the regulation of Okada operations. It's going to be done by the police, Ghana Police Service, so that those the speed limits that have been given to us on our major highways and then the towns, etc., if we do not adhere to them, then we'll be given the fine. It is not only for speed in any way, even the use of mobile phones, non use of uh, seat belts, all of them will be in the spot, there is the spot fine. So we think that if we can address some of these issues but not just taking people to courts and then but just give them a sports fine it will help reduce uh, one the courts to be free a bit other speakers at the forum also added their voice for safer punishment for offenders who flout the road safety laws Poor road network in the Mandai district remains a setback to socio-economic development in that part of the country. Peter Kwawadato reports commuting within the area is challenging, resulting in frequent road accidents. The Pandai district, one of the 20 administrative districts in the northern region, was carved out of the then Gonja East district in 2008. The district is largely rural, with approximately 90% of the nearly 120,000 population engaged in agriculture. Like many rural settlements in Ghana, roads in the district remain in poor state, affecting commuting within the district all year round. Drivers say they continue to invest in the repair of their vehicles aside frequent road accidents due to the bad nature of the roads. This accident here near Kumdi on the Kwandai Salaga Table Road on Monday, May 27, bore testimony to the claims. The truck loaded with bags of sugar was on its way to Yeji in the Bono region late Sunday, May 26. The driver reportedly managed through the craters up to this point but lost control in an attempt to dodge the muddy water. Some parts of the chassis were also damaged. The driver, we were told, traveled back to Pandai over the night to arrange for another truck in order to transfer the goods. It was unclear the status of the bags of sugar at the time of filming this report. Now here's a story of a 20-year-old who's only Who's, who's, who is autistic, but is only 20 years. Kobnachre is a final year student of the Boise Senior Technical High School. Benjamin Edu caught up with Kobna and has filed this report. Twenty-year-old Kwabnachre has autism spectrum disorder, popularly referred to as autism. The condition is characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech, and nonverbal communication. Meet Kwabnachre, a final year business student at the Obwasi Senior Technical School in the Ashanti region. He finds it difficult to speak, but his friends in class have been supportive with interpretation. Kwabna is also assisted by other students to commute from the dormitory to classes and even engage in other activities. Kwabna is one of the best students in the class. He wants to become a chartered accountant in future. But he could not be registered as a special candidate in the West African Senior High School Certificate Examination, WASI. So, Kwabna was unable to write his papers. The head of the business department at the Obwase Senior High Technical School, Grace Awuni, is worried at the non-availability of opportunities for students with special needs. We thought that he would be treated differently, but that wasn't the case. He writes as a normal student. Yeah, so we are hoping to see what will happen after they finish with the exam. Now he has done with about six subjects, leaving only two, costing and then course accounting, and then that of uh, social studies. Yeah, we hope that um, go or listen to his cry, and then at least touch some people's hearts to come and give him the necessary assistance that he needs. 
Kwabna has been rejected by his mother. He is sheltered by a good Samaritan from his hometown, Ayamfuri, in the central region. Kwabna is daring to change the narrative about people with autism. His ability to ride the Wasi will kickstart his dream of becoming a chartered accountant. All the best to Kwabna. In other news, being in a deprived community is no barrier to their quest to learn. Without infrastructure and teaching materials, the Girandogo Presby Junior High School has been scoring 100% at the basic education certificate examinations since 2016. Peter Kwao Adato has returned from the community in the Mandai district where students trek six kilometers to attend classes and study at the mercy of snakes. Girondongo is a community in the Pandai district of the northern region. Our journey began at 5 a.m. Monday, May 27. From the district capital, Pandai, we set off on a hired motorbike towards Girondongo. On our way, we sighted two girls in school uniforms ahead of us. They were heading to the Girondongo Presby Junior High School. Mary Kujabi, 15, and her friend Aisha were trekking six kilometers from Kunjado to attend school in Girandogo. Ahead of them were a number of others, all going to the same community where the nearest junior high school is located. The students have two more villages ahead before Girandogo, but they were determined. We met more children on their way to school. Finally, we arrived at Girandongo where we saw two school blocks. Whilst exchanging pleasantries with some residents, our attention was drawn to some children we earlier met on our way who bypassed the yellow classroom blocks. They were heading towards a dilapidated thatched pavilion already occupied by a number of students. We were told by the residents it was a junior high school block. Mary Kujabi and her friends arrived at 8.38 a.m. She hopes to become a nurse. Mary said she wakes up at 4 a.m. to undertake house chores, including going to fetch water from the stream. Her journey to school starts at 6 a.m. or earlier. But after trekking six kilometers to get to school, Mary has to again struggle for comfort in class. At the point, she has to borrow a plastic chair from a colleague. This is how some students write in class. The Girondogo Presby Junior High School was established by residents in 2012. The decision was to find a solution to the challenge of having their walls drop out of school after primary six due mainly to absence of a junior high school in the area. The school, which now serves six other communities, was later absorbed by the Ghana Education Service. The only support has been the supply of teachers. At least there are currently eight teachers at post. The children are only to copy notes they can have access to any textbook or any other material. So with the few that teachers have, we also rely on pamphlets outside to, for, to, to gather more information. Academic activities are interrupted anytime the weather changes. In many occasions, children came here for admission and because of the nature of the structure, we have been killing snakes. Sometimes we'll be sitting down, sticks will fall from top, can even hurt some children. And sometimes it has to, the rain storms can, can come and put it down, pull it down. We have to waste all the time to reconstruct it. Some children at a point get disappointed and they, they go away to add other schools. So we are appealing to any philanthropist that can come to our support to come and help us get a school structure. Another challenge authorities and students have to deal with is snakes. In spite of these challenges, the school scored 100% in all three basic education certificate examinations. 
Enrollment keeps increasing with the present total population of 169 students. Form 1 has 82 students culminating in the creation of two classes A and B. But is the district education directorate aware of the situation at Jirandungo? In fact, it was when I got here I decided to visit schools that I saw some of the challenges. The district is lacking teachers and in the schools we lack furniture seriously. Most of the places you find the lower primary lie on the bare floor to write. And that is a big challenge to the district. Education is a fundamental human right and is indispensable for the achievement of sustainable development. As set by the Sustainable Development Goal 4, the provision of 12 years of free, public-funded, inclusive, equitable, quality primary and secondary education is to be achieved by all by 2030. At least nine years of this period should be ensured and compulsory for all without discrimination, leading to relevant learning outcomes. There is the need for a pragmatic and holistic approach to educational needs of the country if the country is to achieve the SDGs and fast-track her developmental agenda. And now to the Volta region and teachers and pupils at Abutiawopo in the whole West Municipality skip class to help put up a bungalow for teachers. This is due to the absence of the teachers' bungalow in the community. Here's a report by Joseph Armstrong Gould Alogbe. For a needy and deprived community in the whole West Municipality of the Volta region, children trek from far and near to acquire knowledge at the Abutiawopo DA Primary School. Both the young and old go through the same routine daily. Upon reaching, their only prayer is for their teachers to make it to school before any sign of rain shows up in the skies. None of the teachers live close to the school due to the lack of bungalows in the community. Any sign of rain will mean no school for the teachers. From a distance, what looks like a community building project later turn out to be the pupils and their teachers coming together to end the frustration of the lack of teachers' bungalow in the community. There's that big river. When it rains and the river is full, we can't come to work. Meanwhile, we are eager to work. That is why we teachers decided to take up this initiative to put up our own bungalow in our own way. Teachers and pupils deserted their classrooms to construct the bungalow. Unfortunately, there is no water in the community. The pupils have to travel several kilometers to get water. After several efforts from both teachers and pupils, they cannot afford to roof the madhouse with the onset of the rains. We are not treated fairly because look at the situation we are facing now. Thing. We don't have textbook, we don't have anything. We are just trying to buy things to help the teachers and look at the bungalow, look at the distance. This place, we don't have any portable water, we don't have light. We need a roofing seat to complete everything. And the second one, we are the window level. Any assistant that will be giving us to complete the project, we are ready for that. The news team found out there are several schools in the whole West District that lack adequate educational facilities. The Sustainable Development Goal 4 is to ensure inclusive and equitable education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Teachers and pupils at Abutiawopo are pleading to the government to come to their aid. Meanwhile, pupils of the Abutia Batetno Basic School in the whole West District of the Volta region sit on the bare floor to study. School authorities say the situation is negatively impacting on the quality of education. A report by Joseph Armstrong Gold Alodbe. A six unit classroom block at the Abutia Batetno Basic School looks attractive from outside, but inside is empty with no chairs and tables for the pupils. Pupils at the nursery level carry their own chairs from home and trek several kilometers to reach their school. Those who cannot afford a chair sit on a bare floor. Pupils who sit on the bare floor to study use their hands to support their uniforms from getting dirty. Some of the pupils who spoke to TV3 said they sit on the floor for their lessons making them unable to write well. 
The school has no dining hall. During break time, pupils sit on the floor to eat. <laughs> Fortunately for JHS 1, 2 and 3, they have some chairs, but they have to share their classroom with snakes and other animals because they learn under shades. Head teacher of the school, NS who said the situation is affecting the performance of the school. We don't have enough teachers, so we combine the, some of the classes. So two classes to one teacher. So we need teachers to be posted to the school okay. for effective teaching and learning to go. The public relations office of the whole West Educational Directorate, Hubonti Frank, spoke about plans to have the issues addressed. When students do not get the right infrastructure to study in, it affects them psychologically, even physically. They are not placed with the environment in which they find themselves. So there's no motivation. For a school with a population of about 200 pupils, it has only 12 decks shared among few pupils. The conditions under which pupils of Abutia Botopo Basic School study defeat the Sustainable Development Goal 4, which is to ensure inclusive and equitable education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Until pupils in Abutia Botopo Basic School get help, they will continue to suffer such discrimination each day just for the quest to be educated. News 360 is also live on channel 275 on DSTV. Stay with us as we return shortly with Mission. Hello again, it's now time for Mission. And Mission is sponsored by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. In our very first story, one of the harshest ways of restraining persons with mental illness in Ghana is to chain them to a post or a bed. In the process, many people with mental illness are physically or emotionally damaged. Well, Mission was at Abanse in the Odumase Krobo in the eastern region and report on the plight of 19-year-old twins, James and John Tete, who are relying on the support of their 68-year-old grandmother for survival. Chained, locked and forgotten, these words best describe the deteriorating state of 19-year-old twins James and John Tete, who have multiple disability and are battling mental illness. <laughs> When 68-year-old Cecilia Tete decided to take on the challenge of catering for John and James after the demise of their parents, she did not know she was in for a daunting task. For two years, the twins have been chained outside their home, sleeping on this mattress with their grandmother. This is because the twins lit a match and set fire to their room ablaze months ago. Cecilia fears they may repeat the incident at the slightest opportunity, hence her decision to chain them. <laughs> When I don't chain them, they will roam, and I don't have the strength to chase them. She has even been heard severally in attempts to cater for them. The twins cannot be released because the keys to the padlock are missing. At 68, Cecilia fears time is not on her side. She cannot work and depending on 106 CDs every two months from the LEAP program is inadequate to cater for herself and the boys, so they eat once a day. Oh. Jesus. I'm appealing to Ghanaians to come to our aid, especially in getting quality mental health care for the boys. Mission 
The condition of the twins is the face of mental health in most homes and prayer camps in the country. So what assistance is the Department of Social Welfare giving to the family? I connected her to social welfare and they have been taking care of them. The leap money too is not sufficient. They give them medicine. But according to her, their medicine, the one they give them is not the uh, the one who can which can calm them down. The situation wasn't all that good. It wasn't the best. And then we tried as much as possible to enroll them on the NHIS for them to access free uh, health care. Aside the LEAP program, what other options are available to Cecilia and the twins? I would suggest the grandmother maybe will apply for the PWD Disability Fund and then we'll see the trading which she might fit in. Then we'll assist in that direction too. They will have to give them special medical care because the nurse who visits them isn't giving that. Even though she goes there to give some health care, I think that is not enough. There is the need to improve domestic conditions of people with mental illness, develop community care programs, raise mental health literacy in communities and among health workers, and also to ensure that their basic rights are monitored and guaranteed. Last week, Sunday on Mission TV3 brought to you the story of Matilda Adbenega, who was unable to write Cormart Paper 2 in the WASI examinations. While well, the mission team has been finding answers from the Ghana Education Service on why a software was not developed to enable her write the paper. Three years ago, TV3 first aired the story of Matilda Adbenega during the basic education certificate exams. She was unable to write section B of the math paper due to her condition. Matilda has cerebral palsy, a disorder that affects a child's movement and muscle tone. In Matilda's case, she cannot hold a pen to write a paper. The Ghana Education Service promised to develop a software to enable Matilda write future exams. Our division has also laced with the special coordinator and then other stakeholders. To deal with it. To deal with it, to get a specific and a special software for her. Three years after, Matilda sat for her WASI exams but was unable to write core math paper too because the software had still not been developed. It was okay, but me, because of the Mbaya did not provide me with the net, net tree soft to buy. So it was a bit difficult for me. So I wasn't able to do it. So we sought answers from the Director of Special Education at the Ghana Education Service. Now with regards to Matilda's issue, we made efforts. We promised that we contact other stakeholders to support. So with regards to that, we contacted one company. Uh -huh. And that is take era DI into development of software and other solutions and support for education. And they were ready. So they started the process. They have been able to uh, develop, but they've not completed. So looking at the time frame for the examination, we took another decision where we wanted to do some individualized remediation, that is remedial classes for her, with other subjects. The software was for mathematics to be able to uh, draw her Venn diagrams and other uh, aspects of her mass graph and others. When it really mattered the most, especially with regards to mathematics, Ghana Education Service did feel her. How would you react to this? Uh, we didn't feel her as such. It's a process. The software developer tasked to help develop the software admitted some challenges but added his outfit did assist Matilda with extra tuition. So we did put in some effort to do something but what we came up with, with no funding, with little time, was not good enough. And so we decided to offer academic assistance. So some of our volunteers from the University of Ghana went in and they go there like two times in a week to do academic assistance. And so we did that for a period of about three months knowing that at least she'll be able to answer the questions. But we also were mindful of the fact that 
Wayek, mathematics, according to her mother, she is not really done maths because they just did not regard her to be able to do it. So they didn't really engage her in mathematics. So we were thinking the psychologist, according to the psychologist report, they will take her out of maths. So I'm actually very surprised that she is even required to write it because I was thinking just like they they just like they wave it for visually impaired students, they will also wave it for her. So when will the software be developed? And she's working hard towards that. And it's also involved funding costs. As I said, I have to also engage other stakeholders. So I've talked to other people. We will see where possible and when possible to complete it. So how far we've gone is we've done the research. We understand the problem. We understand what it takes to do it. But looking at the time frame, it didn't work. right? And so we are hoping that we can be able to work towards that. We can't confirm the funding, yes, but we can work on that and confirm that because we actually had not gotten any, the truth is we had, we had not gotten any assurance, but we're hoping that we can develop a solution that can be used. Mission will pursue the agenda to have a software developed for students with special needs like Matilda to enable them write examinations with ease. Porsche Gabo, TV3 News, Accra. And that's it for Mission. Mission is sponsored by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Thanks so much for your time. Over to you, Issa. I'm just amazed by mm. the answers given to uh, you by the Ghana Education Service. Yeah. They, they, they can't procure the software. They would have, Matilda would have to wait for how long? Ah. Let's throw the challenge out there to private software developers to also help develop one for Matilda and all children with special needs in Ghana. You've said it all. Thank you very much. And uh, you're watching News 360. And uh, let's do some more stories on News 360 tonight. And Ala Foods Limited, producers of Danu Milk, has distributed milk to residents of Kumasi to commemorate World Milk Day. Now, the gesture forms part of awareness creation on the benefits of consuming milk. Dietitians recommend milk as an important part of a healthy, balanced diet. Frequent consumption of milk is good for maintenance of blood pressure, strengthening of bones, maintenance of immune system, and skin health, among other health conditions. In 2001, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization set aside June 1 as World Milk Day to recognize the importance of milk as a global food. Ala Foods Limited has joined the world to mark the day by providing free milk products to residents of Kumasi. The company embarked on an awareness drive from Abrapo through to Bantama to Dr. Mensa before finally ending at the Kumasi City Mall. Residents rushed to the company's stands to feel a taste of Dano milk. Commercial marketing manager of Ala Foods, Mausi Mawanyepia Hulede, stressed on the need to consume more milk. Milk is very important. Even in God's wisdom, when a child is born, the first food that the child takes is milk. So milk contains a lot of nutrients, a lot of um, minerals and vitamins that the body needs to function properly. She said Ala Foods has come out with different dairy products to make milk consumption encouraging. Nowadays, everybody is, is about healthy diet and healthy nutrition and all of that. Dairy is, is, is important to so build a healthy nation, really. Dairy nutrition basically is important for the body. So take milk. But when you are taking milk, make sure to choose the right kind of milk. Make sure to choose Dano. Some residents who tasted the Dano milk urge others to patronize the product. I am recommending the product for the public. It is very nice. Destiny is different from other milk. All mothers should buy Dano milk for their world. It's very nutritious. World Milk Day provides an opportunity to bring attention to activities that are connected with the dairy sector. The final day of the National Baby and Toddler Fair was characterized with massive patronage and healthy interactions with parents and exhibitors. Exhibitors lauded Media General and Planet One for organizing the fair and underscored the need to replicate it across the country. George Queenin was at the Marina Mall and has come through with this report. The event marks the second edition of the National Baby and Toddler Fair. The fair was to bridge the gap between new and expectant parents and suppliers and manufacturers of baby wares. Items on sale came with huge discounts. Anything that spoke to the needs of babies, mothers and parents were available. 
as the waiters lauded organizers for the fair and called for more fairs in other regions. Honestly, it's been amazing. The patronage is good and, uh, you know, everyone tries to get in here to find out what we have. Anybody who comes to our stand leaves, they are able to pick a thing or two. We need more of these in almost all the regions. We need it as often as possible because the exposure, the patronage, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. Patrons expressed delight over the rapport between themselves and exhibitors. Okay, so yesterday I was watching the news and then I saw a clip from here that there was a fair going on. So this afternoon we decided to take a trip down here and then I came in. Okay, so there are nice things here. You know, babies are delicate and you should use quality stuff for them and they are not really easy to come by. So I came here to see the vendors and also take their contact for future shopping okay. yeah management of montessori's educational institutions among others were present to give expert advice to new and expectant parents well i just got myself this very face tower from one of the stands here it's so quality and so this is one of the numerous quality products you can have here at the fair and speaking to some of the exhibitors they've confirmed that this fair has given them that leverage there's so much desired and so they've called for more of this to be replicated in other regions and so from the marina mall here at Accra, Josh Quinn reporting for TV3. Right, and that's it. For News 360, there will be updates on 3news.com. I am Issa Moni. And I am Portia Gabo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening. <laughs>